Do you know how cotton is made? Do you know all the application of cotton and cotton seed oils? It includes the American paper currency, 75% cotton. So tag along on this video, I am taking you to the oldest cotton gin in Americas, located right here in Texas, about an hour away west of Houston. It was built in 1914. And here is what we call Lady B, which is pretty much what powers that cotton gin. Very impressive machine. So first, I'm going to take you to visit inside that old cotton gin and see Lady B, understand how the process works, and then we will visit this little cotton gin museum that will tell you more about the application of cotton and how the life was for those working cotton in the past. So tag along! actually be a hundred years old in two years. See, she was made in 1925 in Pennsylvania and she had to come here by the rail line. And the railroad ran just down the hill from where we are right here and they built a wooden track from there to here and they hooked this up to mules and used those big flywheels to pull it up the hill. And it took them about a day and a half and a bunch of guys from town to help them do it because she's very heavy, which most women don't like to hear that said, but she is. She, she, she's yeah, she's stout. <laughs> and she runs on diesel fuel. They use Lady this kerosene, but today they use diesel fuel. And this is our clutch. Have y'all uh, have y'all seen anybody drive a tractor or a vehicle that has a that's a has a stick shift that they have to shift? That's basically well, that is not basically what this is. It is linked in with that though. This is the clutch. <laughs> this is basically wow. gonna gonna tell the engine, hey, I want you to connect to everything we have in the building and make it all turn. And so look in this room right here, that's our belt room. So that's where all the belts have got to be connected for skinning season. And they had a steam engine that sat right there. So that's what actually powered the gin for the first 11 years. So in 1914, we'd be standing on the outside of the building because this hadn't been bought yet. So these are actually parts of our original staircase. The main thing that's important to know about that is that it leans a little bit. So just be careful when you're going up it and it's a little steep. But take your time, just do one step at a time, okay? All right. Yeah, so I got to see one of these in um, the, at the Granger gym. We went there when they were missing a part so they weren't running it, but they had a tower drive very similar to that. And then one of the other gyms in Thrall had a moss lint cleaner, which we also have, and they were operating those. And it was like, oh my God, I can see one that operates because we don't operate any of the other parts of it today. Today it's just literally running through the gin stands to the breast box. It's not doing any cleaning or anything. It's too hot, August. <laughs> okay, so when you look at the gin stands, you're going to see all those seed and lint that we talked about, those seed rolls. 
you cannot see the saw blades because they're buried underneath all of these, this cotton and that's probably good because they are sharp. Yes. There's 80 blades in each of our stands. Wow. And this is what we had all opened up because they replaced every single one of these with brand new saw blades. Mm. And that was actually really fun. I asked to do video and talk to them a little bit about what they do. And they basically said, it's really similar to what we do. They said, we, we never know what we're gonna find. We take our tools come in here they really didn't know what to expect so they brought even more tools um but it was fun it was fun to right hear so if you come and you look right back there you see all those tubes that's where that cotton is coming out okay it's coming out of each of the stands the trash is coming down this little slide right here that's one of the little trash slides mm -hmm. and then the lint is coming through this big tube here and then when it gets to this area you're going to separate the air from the lint so you're going to send the air out this big tube and then the lint is going to come down. So all your cotton, your gin cotton is going to be in one box. Yeah, dogs. And those are the dogs. And they wag their tails and they move back and forth and back and forth. Do you remember what they do? Mm -hmm. They keep the cotton down because you want to keep adding it in, but you don't want that cotton to keep coming back up. That, you want to you keep what, it. That's what makes the bales. Yeah, this is what makes the bale. Let's go around and you can see inside it. You'll see the big chute where the cotton rolls down. Remember, the air is blowing it through the whole process. So remember how fluffy it was when we looked at that, that cotton from our mini gin? That's how it's going to look when it's coming down here. Now, you can't really see the slide, but it's right behind the screen. And this is a tramper that basically is just keeping the cotton down. And so it's going to keep pressing and pressing. It's not really pressing it um, like the press on that side will, but it's keeping as much of our cotton in as possible. And then there's a little lock released right here. And so this double press box will turn around. And so now your cotton's all the way over there. And they would have already dressed it, which means they would have already done what they've got right here, which is burlap on the top, burlap on the floor. Well, so the way that one is, is there's, there's this little locking, there's a connecting piece basically that you can kind of see there. They're connecting those two straps together and they're doing that when they're dressing it. So then so this was the bale press, pretty much two large boxes. One is a charging box receiving all the cotton getting processed and the other one is the one compressing the cotton and that is your bale, which can weigh about 500 pounds. So now that we've seen the old cotton gene, let's go inside the museum, which explains to us the history of cotton dating back from more than 7,000 years ago where the plants were growing wild and then focusing more on this gene in particular. At this site, so the Burton Farmer's Gene that was built in 1914, which is 51 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, in the time of the Community Gene, where every small community needed a gene to process the cotton being grown. So in 1914, it is estimated that there were at least 4,000 cotton genes across Texas. Quite a few, right? And here, this was a predominantly German community. There were 17, 13 farmers formed an association to build that particular gene. And during the 60 years, going from 1914 to 1974, this gene was operated and families of several ethnicities, whether it's African American, Hispanic or Anglo, planted picked and gene cotton, just as they did all across Texas. So, when we go through this museum, we see, I mean, how people were dressed, as you can see here, to uh, work uh, the cotton, and they were all working, including the kids. Pretty much as soon as you could walk, <laughs> you would harvest the cotton. And it was a tough job when you know how hot it is in, te in Texas in the summer. So the men had obviously the uh, biggest bag, very uh, long and heavy bag to carry. Women had a smaller one and the kids had an even smaller one. But everybody was in the field carrying their long bag of cotton, which was pretty heavy at the end of the day. So we went around that small museum, looked at the few exhibits showing us how the cotton was harvested, how it was processed, the different colors of cotton, because it's not just white, and also the application. I did, had no clue we used uh, the cotton seed oil, for instance, in places like uh, 
toothpaste. And then there is a short 15 minute video to watch that really shows you uh, how the plant works uh, really live and how it was operating in the past as well. So very interesting videos in a small uh, movie uh, room. But let's look at that machine here because this is a mini electric jid that works. The kids were fascinated. <laughs> 